Hello, my gorgeous people. It's Grace here by Cadonia, and welcome to Campot, a lovely little Cambodian town built on the river, but quite close to the sea. In fact, it's so close to the sea that the river sometimes flows backwards during high tides. Behind us, we have the Cardamom Mountains, and in front of us, the ocean. In the immediate vicinity, we have fields of sand and clay where there are farms full of durian and mango and pepper and, of course, bananas and coconuts. The trails are a mixture of clay, red clay, yellow clay and sand. Some of the sand is really quite deep, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, the first thing I did when I got to Camport was walk straight into a lunch of the local chapter of the Rebels Motorcycle Club. As you do, it was quite unexpected. I was just looking for a friend of a friend who had been recommended to me as a contact in town. When I arrived at the designated meeting place, he wasn't there, but the rest of the Rebels were, and they invited me to a party that very evening. I am always one to accept hospitality in the spirit in which it's offered, and so I happily accepted. And by that evening, I was drinking beers and subsequently tequila with some very nice people from all over the world. I parked my KTM outside the bar, knowing that it was safe as houses, and had the privilege of sharing stories with some really interesting people, one of whom is Paul, who rode his Moto Guzzi across Africa when he was about 20 years old. I asked him how was Africa, and he said, hard. I don't doubt it. Apparently the Moto Guzzi broke down a lot, and he had to get very creative with his engineering in order to keep it on the road. But as I've learned in my own travels, every time you have a problem, there's also an opportunity behind it. I put the word out that I was wanting to go dirt bike riding and would love to have some local company on the trails. And soon enough, the excellent Chris had connected me with the excellent Dennis. 7am the next morning found me ready and geared up at the rendezvous point, enjoying the cool air of early morning and scarfing down the pastry I'd grabbed for breakfast on my way out of town. Soon Dennis rocked up with his daughter, much to my delight, and we all hit the trails for a little bit of sandy fun. I was absolutely delighted to have some female dirt biking company, but unfortunately I can't show you any footage of that because in the early morning light I had put the wrong SD card into my GoPro and it was already full. So you're just going to have to close your eyes and imagine all of the sandy single track we did that day. This was fabulous practice for me because I haven't done a lot of sand on the 690 and she's a fairly big beastie for wrestling up and down the single track. But I have to say I was absolutely stoked to find out that over the past year of dirt biking in Thailand, my skills have improved to a useful extent. We took a couple of dirt naps throughout the day, but not enough to really exhaust me from the effort of picking up the bike, even though it was genuinely really hot. Dennis was riding the very interesting and light and nimble little bike, the Beta Cross Trainer. And so 300 cc's of two-stroke goodness in an undersized frame. This bike is so, so light and manageable. A total contrast to hauling the 690 through the single track, as you can imagine. I definitely got a workout throughout the day but had just enough energy left to take the cross trainer for a little bit of a spin between the durian trees in Dennis's backyard, and that was really cool. This bike makes you want to practice your technical maneuvers because it's so approachable. I am really curious to know what it would be like trying the hard enduro stuff around Chiang Mai. This bike is not built for speed in the same way as the big two-stroke 300cc enduro bikes, but in Chiang Mai we don't really do speed. Instead we're doing really steep technical slow speed stuff. And I would love to see how the cross trainer performed. 
Having said all that, what you're watching now is just me cruising into town on your average Cambodian road. And as you can probably see, the 690 is absolutely perfect for this. The bike could not be happier in the gravel, sailing over the potholes at speed in the countryside. Now it was at this point that my boots really started falling apart. These were the old second-hand boots which I had been lent before the pandemic. And unfortunately here in the climate of Southeast Asia, plastics on all your gear have a really limited lifespan. Now these boots were already old when they were lent to me and the simple passage of time had brought them to the end of their useful lifespan. By the end of the day, one boot had no plastic protection left on the front of the foot at all, and everything else was on its way out. So I ended up calling up the excellent bike shop in Phnom Penh called Bike and Nature. And as I understand it, not only do they sell all the gear that you might need, but they also run heaps of great enduro tours. Anyway, in Cambodia, everyone knows everyone, and Bike and Nature came very highly recommended to me. And rightly so, within a few text messages over Facebook, they had a pair of boots on their way to me here in Campot. So here is me with a bunch of things to be super happy about. I have an awesome motorbike, I have brilliant new friends, I have dirt biking, I have boots. I am a happy woman. But come with me now as we head up Bokor Mountain. Now this mountain is about 30 kilometers out of Kampot and it looms above the town with its top in cool weather. Yes, on the days when you can sit in front of a fan in a cafe in Kampot and just feel the rivulets of sweat running down your back. Up on the mountain it's cool and almost cold and it's trying to rain. For this reason, the French colonizers built a hill station up on top of Bokor with an elegant hotel where they could get away from all of the heat. First during World War II and then through the period of the Khmer Rouge right up until the 90s, this was a place of some strategic importance. Today, when you go up on top of the mountain, you see this veritable ghost town which is slowly being reoccupied. So there's the temple up on top of the mountain, which is the only bit that has been consistently in use by appearances. And then you have this huge 1990s era hotel slash casino, which is actually open, but somehow still firmly rooted in the 90s. You ride along and you see row after row of abandoned terraces, as well as a small palace which was apparently one of the summer homes of the king. Today the whole area has been leased to a company for 99 years and as part of that contract they've had to improve the road up the mountain and as you can see it's a very very nice road. I was super surprised that I didn't see any other big bikes on the mountain using it as a racetrack. But I guess that's just how my brain works. Anyway, when you arrive on top of the mountain, there's not much to do except drink your canned coffee and try to see the sea through the hazy clouds. Well, there's that and flirting with pretty girls who like your motorcycle. Let's not underrate that. For now, the rest of today is a rest day because after yesterday's fun on the trails, my muscles are kind of sore. And my laundry absolutely needs washing, so. Not to mention my bike needing some tender loving maintenance. Kamai New Year will happen in a couple of days time and the whole town is already reverberating with incredibly loud music and commentary, broadcast through spine-tingling loudspeakers. Experience with the new year in Laos as well tells me that quietude will not be a thing for the rest of the week. Sleeping is going to be done with earplugs. 
I still haven't decided whether I'm going to hang around in town or run for the hills during the festivities. Anyway, I'll keep you posted.